The Lord be with you. Welcome to our hymn study series. We move on in the Pentecost season to the second Sunday after Pentecost, which this year is June 2nd. The hymn of the day is a justification hymn, number 566, By Grace I'm Saved. Very clearly why we find this hymn in the justification section of our service book. A tremendous hymn, a hymn that is used uh, as the hymn of the day on uh, more than one occasion. A few uh, background notes about the hymn. It was authored by a man named Christian Scheidt, a German man, uh, lived and studied in Germany, lived in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, died in Germany. These were some of his uh, careers. Theologian, philosopher, lawyer, and at the end of his life, he was a librarian. Um, and a librarian, you know, a very uh, different job than what we find today uh, because of the scarcity, the rarity uh, of books in the 1700s. Uh, being published in a, in, in a mass-produced kind of way, uh, but still uh, something that uh, not everybody could get their hands on uh, as we can in our day. Now, a few uh, supporting Bible passages. You see Ephesians chapter 2 and Titus chapter 3. Let me just read what God's word has to say, Ephesians 2, 4 through 9. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So Paul wrote that for us, and Paul wrote this to Titus, his spiritual son. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Very much the same a wonderful focus on God's grace in rescuing us, in saving us, in making us right with God, justifying us, making us right. So it's a six-verse hymn. I've put uh, six notes that I want to discuss on our whiteboard. We'll read it verse by verse, and in the description down below, you'll find a link to this hymn, By Grace I'm Saved. Verse 1, by grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul, believe and doubt it not. Why stagger at this word of promise? Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No, then this word must true remain. By grace you too will life obtain. Has scripture ever falsehood taught? Well, maybe there is a time when our soul is overcome, awestruck at what God has done for us in saving us. Why stagger at this word of promise? Well, People have made promises to us before, and they were not kept. 
companies have made promises to us before and they were not kept. Workers promised to do something and they did not do it. And it fell on us to clean it up. We know what broken promises are like. Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No. Then this word must true remain. By grace you too will life obtain. What are we looking for? What is the point of having grace? Obtaining life. Obtaining life. Today, yes, today. And in the life to come. Verse 2, by grace, none dare lay claim to merit. Our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, to this sinful earth. His death did for our sins atone, and we are saved by grace alone. Merit? None dare lay claim to it. That's not how... God's grace works. That is not how salvation works. So again, what place do good works have? They have a tremendous place in our life. It's the result of being made right with God. The joy we have of being able to serve not serving, wondering what the other person can give to me. Oh, I'll help that person because that person is well off and they can give me something in return. Nope, that is not a good work. That's more of a contractual thing, right? Go to work for the one who will pay you the most. Not grace. There is no merit. Every place in heaven is going to be great. So don't worry how far up in the line you are. If you cling to Jesus alone and look for his grace alone, up eternal life obtained. Verse 3. By grace, God's Son, our only Savior, came down to earth to bear our sin. Was it because of your own merit that Jesus died your soul to win? No, it was grace and grace alone that brought him from his heavenly throne. So here's a little bit of the history of salvation that God in his wisdom saw the condition of humanity and sent Jesus Christ, our only Savior, no other Savior but Jesus. Grace brought Jesus from his heavenly throne to come to earth and put on that form of a servant and die for you. Verse 4, by grace, this ground of faith is certain. As long as God is true, it stands. What saints have penned by inspiration, what in his word our God commands. Our faith in what our God has done depends on grace, grace through his Son. As long as God is true, it stands. Well, good. Maybe going back to verse two, uh, verse one, pardon me. Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No. As long as God is true, he's always true. He was true yesterday, today, and will be. God's grace, it will be true for you for the coming generations. The church's justification 
your justification done solely by God. That is the teaching on which the church stands or falls. As long as God is true, he is and will be. Verse 5, by grace to timid hearts that tremble, in tribulation's furnace tried. By grace, in spite of fear and trouble, the Father's heart is open wide. Where could I help and strength secure if grace were not my anchor sure? It's like this hymn writer knows us, an anchor for timid hearts. A tribulation's furnace, maybe a little story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three young friends of Daniel who were thrown into the fiery furnace. Timidity. Mm -hmm. But we have an anchor. Right? There are times when maybe we see how timid we are and how fearful we are. And we criticize ourselves. I should be bolder. I should be more courageous like that person. Why can't I be more courageous like them? We are saved by faith in Jesus. We're not more saved if our faith is strong. We're not less saved if our faith is weak. Weak faith or strong faith, it's all saving faith in Jesus. Saved by grace alone, through faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, revealed in God's word alone. You have an anchor. I have an anchor for when our timidity may get the best of us. Verse 6, by grace, on this I'll rest when dying. In Jesus' promise I rejoice. For though I know my heart's condition, I also know my Savior's voice. My heart is glad all grief has flown, since I am saved by grace alone. Nice way to bring the hymn back to the beginning. Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No. God makes promises. In Jesus' promise I rejoice. Even on my deathbed. And the knowledge that we have. I know my heart. That's not always a good thing to know. Our heart can be deceived and led in so many different directions by the devil, the world, our sinful selves. I know my heart, but I know my Savior. I know my Savior's voice. So maybe here the author of the hymn is directing us to John chapter 10. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. They know my voice. The importance of hearing God's word. Listening to the voice of Jesus. Bringing you the good news. That you are saved by grace. By grace alone. Thanks for watching this hymn study video today. As we prepare ourselves for this coming Sunday, as we thank God for hymns that keep us connected uh, to his holy church. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.